Hi everyone, welcome to this uh, focus talk number nine. Uh, so I'm very glad uh, to welcome you. Uh, so it's part of our focus talk series uh, happening this week. Uh, I'm Adeline Blanchard, uh, responsible for visual arts at Institut Francais. Sorry for repeating myself, but I have to uh, say it again uh, for every talk. Uh, and the focus program is a focus uh, organized by Institut Francais twice a year inviting curators and uh, institutions directors from all over the world uh, to discover the French art scene and uh, today I'm very happy uh, to welcome uh, two um, Marcel Duchamp prize nominees uh, so first of all uh, so we have Alice Anderson uh, welcome to you. Uh, hi. hi. I, I think we could uh, get rid of the, the slide, yeah, so that we can see uh, you, uh, Alice. And then, so I will welcome uh, Isham Berada. Hello, Isham. So, yeah, we can't see you. Um, and then, so I will, um, so they will be in conversation uh, together with Centre Pompidou uh, curator uh, Sophie Duplex. Hello, Sophie. Hello. And uh, so, but first of all, so I just wanted um, uh, to, yeah, to say a short introduction uh, on the ADIAF because the Marcel Duchamp Prize has been founded, created by the ADIAF 20 years ago. And ADIAF is the Association of uh, International Diffusion of French Art that was founded by uh, over 300 collectors. Um, and Caroline Crabbe is here uh, from the ADIAF to represent them and to, to say an introduction about ADIAF and, and about the way uh, you promote uh, the nominees of the prize uh, abroad. Hi, Caroline. Hi, hi, Adeline. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, yes, uh, just a, a short introduction. Uh, so, uh, as Adeline told you, the ADIAF uh, uh, is, uh, the international is an association of collectors, in fact about uh, 400 collectors at the moment, and uh, it's an association which, um, which aims is to, to promote and to enhance the French scene, the French contemporary scene. So it has been uh, uh, created uh, by ADIAF and it's organized since the beginning uh, with uh, Centre Pompidou, uh, which uh, invites uh, every year, uh, the, uh, du du during 15 years they have invited the laureates and since uh, four years, in fact, they invite the four artists which are nominated. Uh, the, so each year we have now about uh, 85 uh, artists who have been uh, distinguished by the prize. In fact, each year we have four artists we are, we, which are nominated by a selection committee. The selection committee is composed of um, uh, collectors of uh, our association and uh, also with the, the help of the curator of uh, the uh, exhibition at the Saint Pompidou. So this year it's uh, Sophie Duplex. And um, the, the four artists, in fact, uh, uh, after there is, a, they, have, they are invited for a group show. And uh, we have a, a jury, an international jury, which is uh, presided by, um, Bernard Blisten, the director of the Museum, National Museum of, of Modern Art, and uh, the Saint Pompidou, and uh, with also our president, Gilles Fuchs, and uh, with uh, two um, important uh, di director of uh, mu international museum, and uh, also two collectors, important collectors, uh, French and, uh, and abroad. So I think that Adeline, you will, you will. Um, you will give the name of, uh, of uh, the, the, the jury of uh, this year. And uh, uh, also what is important to say is that uh, uh, the Marcel Duchamp Prize is an example of a partnership bec between private and public. And uh, that also we organize, it's not only a prize, but we organize also international uh, exhibition uh, abroad 
We have organized 20 uh, international exhibitions in China, in Europe, uh, in Argentina, with the help of uh, the Institut Francais. And this is uh, what also we, we try to, to do with all the artists, the, with the laureates and also the artists which are nominated. Thank you very much, Caroline. So, yeah, if you want to, me to precise the jury members, so I can tell. Uh, so, as you said already, Bernard Blisten, director of Centre Pompidou, uh, also Chris Durkan, uh, president of Grand Palais, uh, Gilles Fuchs, uh, as a founder collector of Adiaf, um, also three other collectors, uh, the vice, the, the deputy president of Fondation Hippocrène, uh, Michel Guillaume Rose. Um, another collector, Akemi Shiara, Marie-Cécile Sinzu uh, from the Sinzu Foundation in Benin, and also the director of Moderna Musette uh, in Stockholm, uh, Gitte Oksu. Uh, so we'll pass on the word uh, to Sophie Duplex, um, curator at Centre Pompidou, who worked together with the artists um, on, the, on the, the presentation of the prize. Um, so, yeah, thank you very much, Sophie, for introducing uh, uh, the artist. Thank you. So I will introduce uh, Alice Anderson. So Alice Anderson was born in 1972 in France, in Alfortville, near Paris. She studied at Ecole des Beaux-Arts de Paris and at, uh, after at London Goldsmith College. So some moments in her career, from 2011, she has started before, but 2011 is a year, a fundamental year in her practice, I guess. So in 2011, at the Freud Museum in London, she developed a, her own weaving technique based on repetitive dance movement and the use of copper wire. She calls this memorization. In 2012, at the Whitechapel Gallery, London, along with 25 other performers, she memorized photo albums brought by the public. Uh, in 2014, at the Welcome Collection in London, her exhibition attracted 40,000 visitors coming to take part in a collective performance. 2015, she was hosted by um, Espace Culturel Louis Vuitton in Paris, and she memorized the venue's architectural dat data with wire, and one work uh, from this series has since joined the collections of the Centre Pompidou. In 2016, she conceived wires, which became permanent sculptures in, an, in a historical building, partly built by Eiffel in the second uh, arrondissement in Paris. And the same year at the Saatchi Gallery in London, she created a circular walk of 181 kilometers around a sphere using wire, so to memorize it. Uh, in 2017, she was invited at a performance cycle called In Vivo in Centre Pompidou. Uh, 2019 is an important year as she was invited for a residency at Atelier Calder in Sachet, which is in Touraine in France. This place receives every year earth artists uh, for a few months and uh, it has been entirely designed by Calder himself in the 60s, 1960s. In 2020, she had solo exhibitions at uh, La Patinoire Royale in Brussels, which followed another uh, <clears throat> 2018 show uh, in this huge and beautiful exhibition space. And uh, to, she also exhibited in 2020 at Fluxus, Fluxus Art Projects London. And for 2021, she's preparing a project for the Mutation Creation show, which will take place in Centre Pompidou, Paris. She's represented by uh, La Patinoire Royale, Galerie Valérie Bach, Brussels, and Waddington Custard, London. So dance performance is at the heart of Alice Anderson's work. She gives substance to the immaterial through ritual-like performances which generate sculptures, painting, and drawing. Um, she examines, in a world where machine learning and algorithm govern the fate of humanity, what we can learn from our body in its relationship with the universe and its own algorithm. She explores body, body learning, a term 
which stands as a counterpoint to the vocabulary of artificial intelligence. So her, her approach underscores the urgency of human dimension in a contemporary world driven by technology. So let us hear Alice and see uh, the images of her, her project for Primar Saint Lucian 2020. Okay, thank you very much, Sophie, for giving this uh, introduction. So um, I'm just going to maybe repeat a few things, but just showing images and uh, introducing uh, my work. This is only uh, six minutes, but I think that will give you a overhaul. Um, so I'm going to just share my screen. That's uh, okay. To do. Yeah, share. Is it sharing? Yeah. Is it all sharing for you? Okay. So. Okay. I was born in Alfortville. I'm currently living and working between Paris and London. My work is an hybrid between certain ancient cultures and the world of technology. Um, I create sculptures, paintings, and drawings through ritual-like performances. My project, um, Body Learning, highlights two things. The body as the vector of humanity in a contemporary world driven and committed to old technology and the ancestral culture of the Kogi from the Sierra Nevada in Colombia. This community lives in a cosmic harmony with their environment. Their conceptions and rituals have deeply impacted my reflection on this change of civilization. In a world where machine learning and uh, algorithm govern the fate of humanity, multiple questions emerge, such as um, what can we learn from our body in its relationship with the universe and its own algorithms, and um, how to embody the intangible dimensions the presented artworks have been created during lockdowns through dance performances. Um, I painted with colors and weaved with metallic copper wire. The use of copper wire is to symbolize both cerebral and technological connections. The dance performances drive me towards higher state of consciousness. Um, and these dances can be lightning, or meditative, which gives an exhibition in two parts. The larger room brings together the rapid movement through my painting practice. Um, the first artwork is the large blue painting called La Porta del Cielo, Nabusimake, done in 2020. Um, it represents one of the entrances of the sacred sites of Nabusimake in Colombia, uh, which symbolizes the passage between the earthly and spiritual worlds. The painting is part of the series of the geometric dances. The video document shows that the dance is generated by the long strips of wood. There are elements of La Puerta del Cielo that I reproduced in wood. I apply paint directly on them and dance on a long piece of felt. Um, the repetition of movement drives me into other states of consciousness after a few hours. Uh, I don't paint with a brush, but with object or architectural elements. Um, same for the other geometric dances. Um, emergence in which I painted with the reproduction of metal pieces from an urban building site. Um, here the painting is presented in a sculptural way. Then the last step in this room is a painting that has become a sculpture. Uh, this artwork is from the series The Ritual of the Shape, which are performances creating sculptures with painting. Uh, here I have painted as usual with the 3D reproduction of architectural data of a facial recognition machine. 
um, the video document um, shows that I measured and reproduced the elements of the facial recognition machine. Then I performed a ritual with paint on paper and the sculpture was created directly into the exhibition space through the performance. Um, and to finish the smallest room at the entrance, uh, gather works generated by slow and uh, meditative movement, often done in a collective way um, with wire that I call memorization. Uh, the memorization consists in weaving the object with metallic and cotton thread. Um, I'm presenting a totem and statuette uh, made from technological object from the series of the spiritual machines. Um, I'm also showing random chromatic. They are sculptures presented as pixels on walls. Uh, they are collective performances of memorization using scrap wood from the 3D reproduction of previous architectural data that I have made. Um, I collect scrap wood and I organize a dance which corresponds to a random distribution of colors. Um, so each dancer chooses a space of color. Um, picks up shapes randomly and put them into his space of colors. In fact, all the colors get mixed up between all the dancers and spaces. And when the performance is over, each shape that remains on the space of colors will be memorized by the same colors. After the months of collective memorization, I assemble them and uh, of the wooden element. Um, the Kogi used the cotton thread to weave the equilibrium between the spiritual and material world. For them, the thread encapsulates the memory and uh, the ability to record thoughts. I have to specify that I'm not against the progress or the digital. I'm just questioning its democratization and future. Here was my presentation. I don't know if you want to unshare. Yeah maybe and share the screen um, and then maybe I can answer some questions if you have some. Um, I, I find your, your presentation was very interesting um, and um, I, I would find it nice if you would comment a little bit on the dimension of the collective uh, because you, you work with dancers, it is one thing if you can comment on that. And also, um, you um, invite the public uh, sometimes to also participate in your project. So these two aspects linked to the collective. Uh, could you explain a, a bit how it works, how you consider this? Yes, absolutely. Um, there's two ways. I can memorize an object or an architecture doing that alone, but I found out when I'm sharing it with uh, other dancers or with public, because I often um, invite the public to participate, there is something very strong, like a, it's like a social network that we can really um, um, share, but like physically, because what I'm after is really Again, I'm not against all the social networks and stuff, but it's just that I want to put the body at the center of the practice and I, at the center of the, the, the thought. And uh, I think when we are sharing something physically in the same room, there is something that is very, very strong. Actually, uh, when I talk like this, it becomes a little bit intellectual and stuff. And But when people are, trying it, um, then they find their own uh, truth and uh, they understand what, what the meaning of communicating with somebody, communicating with the body, but uh, without really talking, just by sharing movement. And um, I think this is, sorry, this is quite uh, 
this is fundamental for the practice is really to share movement and to develop that over the time um, also each object is different so each object is dictating the movement um, of course uh, if it's a car like uh, we did at the welcome collection in uh, 2015 uh, then it's a different way of uh, thinking, memorizing, uh, living. Um, and then it, when it's a small object, of course, the, 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 the relationship to bodies is, is totally uh, different. But by this uh, sharing, um, sharing it, it's a little bit like a, um, a group uh, a collective group and we are really developing uh, time after time uh, a very strong relationship again without talking and uh, just by sharing movement. I'm not sure I'm, I'm answering what you... Uh... Yeah, yes, yes, uh, of course. Just uh, maybe um, something more related to dance. How did you get into dance yourself? Because uh, one notices you don't dance the same way as the other dancers in the performances. So how did you get to dance um, yeah. personally? And also, uh, did you once discover the other um, visual artists uh, using dance in their work? Uh, did it influence you or... Uh, what do you think about that? Yeah, my, my relay, uh, I'm not a dancer, like a proper dancer, uh, but I respond to spaces and to object with my body. So generally I can really, um, when I'm responding to a, an element of architecture, I'm dancing. It's just to size it. It's also to, uh, to, to learn, but through the body. Uh, so that's why all my work is really about um, having little rituals. It's my way of understanding the world. It's my, it's my way of connecting with other people. Um, also, I'm really, um, we are sharing this energy with the dancers. Uh, it's not the same when I dance with an architecture before painting it, for example and when I dance with other dancers, because this sharing of energy is actually uh, very strong. And um, when we all connect it, it generates really something else. So that's why the collective is important, the, the, the dance is important, and um, we are really sharing those movements. I don't know if, if I understand. Maybe, um related to your performances. So it seems like the performances are a process to produce a piece together and collectivity. Um, and how do you, I mean, is it each time a performance um, goes to uh, the production of a piece or is it the, the, the process? But it can be, it can be, uh, can be us alone in the studio or we can be set uh, in an exhibition space um, it really depends, but what it, or sharing when we share it with the public, um, what is important to us is um, is the generation of or like the the other state of consciousness that it generates. It's something that that, that that's also why we're inviting public uh, to share it because it's something that you understand in fact when you do it. I mean, we can explain it for hours, but uh, the, the, it's very, and I, and I had uh, several um, really um, uh, time uh, experience it. When we all share it, there is something strong uh, about the body, about the physicality of things, about the gathering. And uh, this is really when we are moving around the object or moving around an architecture. It's, it's just a way of, uh, of seeing the world, but also um, having a, a sort of, um, I don't know, how could I describe that? Another, uh, an alternative of uh, really living together, sharing information together, um, um, 
thinking about something. But what is important is uh, the repetition and the dance uh, really generate another state of consciousness. Uh, this is something um, that it's really actually that uh, if you try, you will, you will feel that. And were you able to invite uh, the audience of the public this year um, with the pandemic? Not this or? year, <laughs> not, not this year uh, unfortunately, uh, but uh, several years ago, yes, absolutely, uh, several times with a boat, with a, yeah, yeah, and it, it's quite fascinating um, what it creates. And uh, also uh, just to put the human and the body at the center, uh, not to forget that what we have and what is important today is, is the body. I mean, uh, we could see that Korea now just is launching something which is called a, a project called Untact. And, and it's, um, it's something that it's uh, to be against the physicality of things, of course, for some time, obvious reason, but it's something that I think we should think about. Uh, also, what we're living uh, today, I mean, it, we still need to have a physicality relationship uh, with somebody or two, two things. Uh, of course, we're going through the something that it's uh, that the material is. is uh, over time, but I think just to keep uh, the body at the center is something uh, I think that should um, should uh, fight for. Sorry, fought for. Um, Alice, I, I had a last question. Uh, could yeah. you talk a little bit about your residency in Atelier Calder? Because there, there you changed something in your work or it uh, evolved uh, in a larger scale or what do you think? Yes, absolutely. Uh, for me, it was a very important moment because um, uh, for the first time I had a, a very large studio so I could really dance because my paintings actually are um, moment and um, sort of a space of dance. So that's why they are so large because it's really, it's, there are spaces where I, in which I dance. Um, so for the first time I could actually uh, just unroll my uh, felt or paper and um, dance on it. It was something that, um, that it was absolutely crucial. I should have probably have done it before. And I think at that moment, my, my work really started developed in another, uh, in another dimensions. Uh, that's why it was uh, very important um, to me. And uh, I'm, I'm, now I can continuing, but um, that, that was a very crucial moment for me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Alice. If there are no more questions, so we will carry on with the conversation. Um, so with uh, Isham Berada. Uh, so Sophie, you will introduce uh, Isham, please. Yes. Um, so Isham Berada was born in 1986 in Casablanca, Morocco. He has uh, studied at Ecole des Beaux-Arts in Paris and at Le Frenois Studio National des Arts Contemporains in Tourcoing in the north of France, this famous art school dedicated to new media. He lives and works in Roubaix, north of, of France. Uh, his work has been presented in the framework of numerous solo and collective exhibition, among which, so uh, I start with Paris and around Paris, um, and I go backwards. So in Centre Pompidou, twice, uh, um, this year and the year before, in Musée Zadkine, in Palais de Tokyo, at L'Abbé de Maubuisson, personal exhibition, in the gardens of Chateau de Versailles, at the 104, uh, big uh, contemporary art center in Paris, at the Magval, important museum in the, in the suburb of Paris, and uh, also in various regions of France, like in Le Frenois, uh, in Louvre Lens, a personal exhibition in 2009, uh, at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Lyon, uh, at the Museum of Sérignan, in Tours also, 
and internet internationally um in 2019 was very important year. <laughs> um, Isham had a personal exhibition at the Hayward Gallery in London, at the Bernard uh, A. Zuckerman Museum of Art in Keneso, United States. Uh, he had collective exhibitions in the um, uh, Collection Pinot in Venice, Punta della Dogana, at the Martin Gropius Bau, at ZK ZKM, famous uh, place in Karlsruhe in Germany. Uh, and before in the Frankfurter Kunstverein, in Bogota, in the Moderna Museum of Stockholm, at MoMA PS1. Uh, so in addition to these exhibitions, Hisham Berada realized many performances over the years in various institutions and also for the Nuit Blanche um, in different places. Uh, for 2020-21, he will take or has, has taken part in many biennials like Taipei Biennial, Yokohama Triennale, Guangzhou Biennale. Uh, and uh, before he was uh, always, he also be, um, took part in several biennials like the famous Biennale de Lyon uh, twice. Um, and for 2021, uh, the Palazzo delle Esposizioni in Roma and the Museo, uh, Museo Berardo in Portugal are preparing solo show of Isham Berada. Uh, Isham uh, was in residence at the Pinot Collection uh, in Lens in 2018-2019 and before at Villa Medicis, the prestigious uh, artist in residence place in Roma in 2013. He's represented by Kamel Menour, Paris, London, Ventrup, Berlin, Culture Interface, Casablanca. Isham Berada draws inspiration from scientific protocols to explore various phenomena from an artistic viewpoint. His work combines intuition and knowledge, science and poetry. In 2007, he began a series entitled Présage, transcribing the reactions of chemical products immersed in beakers or fish tanks into a vari variety of media such as, as moving images, sculptures, photographs. His présage revisit the classical notion of landscape. So let him talk about the one which is specifically produced for the Prix Marcel Duchamp 2020. So, hello, thank you very much, Sophie, for the presentation. Um, so, um, uh, sorry for my English, it's not very good, but feel free to, to ask if um, there's anything that is not clear. Um, so yes, présage, it's, uh, we, we, that can be rudely translated as omen, is a series that I began in 2007. Um, and it consists for me uh, of taking a beaker and um, activate different chemical reactions to make a landscape appear. Um, so, so uh, I try in all my work, in all the different series I'm working on, I really try to work like something between a painter and a sculpture. And, um, but uh, very far from Alice Anderson, I try to completely remove the, the hands of, or the body. And as an artist only work as somebody who will choose parameters and that what we will see for me is only nature but nature in in a very vast way so for me uh, uh, what we call chemicals are also nature they are only um, uh, materials that has been taken from the ground and purified and um, i i can share my, my screen and, and show you just some images um, of the installation um, for the Prix Marcel Duchamp. So it's, uh, it's a video that is um, uh, a very high definition video that is made to be projected on a circular uh, wall. Uh, so for me, it, it's, um, uh, the, the, for me, when we look at the painting and on, on a flat canvas or a photograph, um, as we had a lot in art history, um, it's like looking at um, through a window. Uh, we we feel like um, 
inside, um, outside of, of this and the, the, the dispositive of, 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 of making a, a round screen for me, but the spectator inside um, this kind of landscape. So here we, you can see some extracts of the video, but um, so the, the format is made to be round. Um, and so I activate different chemical reaction, one after the other, um, to make a landscape appear. And in, like in all my work, um, as I said, I, I try to work uh, with parameters and measure. For me, science um, is uh, a lot of a matter of measuring. Uh, as soon as we measure things in nature, it, there is like um, a relationship that that's installs between the, uh, the people that measure. And uh, we can little by little build the knowledge of the materials. Um, and for me, building this knowledge is very close to a kind of relationship with matter. Uh, so for example, for, for, for this video, uh, I, I choose to only um, use in my palette um, the, the chemical uh, the chemical, I don't know what to say in English, uh, uh, the, the base chemicals that we can find in concrete, um, trying to, 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 to see what could be um, after the runes, uh, because runes has been a, a theme that is very, was lar largely used in, 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 history, in, in art history. And I try to see runes or time that goes for a long time, like geological times, not as um, forms that uh, that um, that suffer from entropy and um, disappear, but what will what will grow um, after we have built cities? Because I, I think that um, humans to nature one of the major things that they do uh, is like making chemicals, is taking um, t uh, ton tons and of tons of earth and, um, and, and, um, and taking from it uh, a, a very slow amount of pure materials. Like here, it's, it's mainly um, uh, silicon dioxide and calcium. Um, and this is, it is the same way that human built cities so that are um, a huge concentration of concrete that has never been so important um, in earth history. So for me, the, the fact that we have built cities that we have concentrated in a very um, little space, um, uh, an, a huge amount of uh, silicon dioxide and calcium will make that uh, it will emerge from this um, some new landscapes that has never um, have been in, in, in art history and um, perhaps it's for, for us is more uh, the testimony of humans on earth will be mo mostly that mm, um, and not uh, architecture or artworks uh, it's, the, it's just seeing through a geological time what we do um, in, in nature. And uh, for, for the, um, so all the video that we see um, is filmed in a little beaker uh, that I, I try to, um, to compare to a, a blank canvas. And uh, so in this beaker with very um, little tools that can that that help me measure and adapt. For example, viscosity that will have an an, um, um, an impact on time. That because all the video I do are in real time, but in a vis very viscous um, liquid, uh, everything uh, in the movement is is slowed down. So um, uh, and I try to adapt. Um, Temperature, viscosity, concentrations, um, the, 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 the kind of material that will meet in, in this beaker. And uh, then for me, it's just, we see, we only see nature um, without, um, 
So my, my hands can't, can't sculpt. It, it, it just choose the, the, the parameters that I feel right. Um, uh, so I, 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 I am, I've done it for some time and I still continue um, this setup in performances where I'm set, set on the ground and I have a beaker, a camera that live project what's happening inside. Uh, uh, I also did for the Presage series um, some uh, aquariums that um, uh, can evolve, um, that are, are fixed on the wall and that can evolve uh, during the exhibition uh, time. Um, uh, some others. Uh, for, for example, here, for, for, for this one, if you see better. Um, so it's little aquariums that are hanged on the wall and that evolve through the exhibition. Um, so yes, that, that's, um, uh, I, perhaps I can show you uh, just a little my, uh, my studio to, to understand the way I work. I, I, I love to, to discuss with scientists, um, but always in, um, uh, only with the discussion and trying to understand something that I, I don't have um, the, the tools or the knowledge to understand in my studio. But for me, it's very important to control everything. And I never work, for example, in laboratories with machines that I, I don't have um, uh, total control on it. Uh, and I, I rather prefer working more in something that is more uh, an active studio than a laboratory. But some laboratory looks like this with little tools that, um, and, and a lot of time, a lot of, for me, science is, it has begun with um, looking at an taking, taking an object from nature in a closed environment, so the laboratory or studio, and then uh, observing it, changing a parameter, observing it and taking notes um, until we build a, a kind of knowledge on this. Um, and so, uh, so yes, you should see. Oh. So, um, so this is. Uh, so this is your studio. Yes, mainly uh, I I also work uh, uh, in the basement uh, when I need dark. Uh, 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 I, I, I almost take a uh, uh, lot of place in my home, but the studio is at the second floor of my home. Um, so we can see the aquariums. Uh, this, yes, are, are aquariums. And this is, for example, a, a reaction that is ongoing, um, some kind of crystallization. Um, and that can give that, that are, for example, this was um, uh, in an aquarium for about three months to, to develop these, these shapes that are copper shapes. Um, and it's try, trying to make um, um, pure, uh, it's, it's like refining copper from, from, from it's, try, it's trying to, to give again um, a natural shape uh, on copper uh, from the, the tubes that human did. Um, and uh, so yes. Uh, like a science laboratory. Um, not really. The, the tools I, I use are, uh, sorry, I, I fix it a bit. Uh, the, the tools I use are, are often very basic. Uh, uh, it's, uh, it's more using the, 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 the attitude of scientists than using real um, to today science doesn't do almost anymore um, real experience everything is a kind of um, computer simulation 
or works on paper. Uh, there, there are still some, but even in France, I love to, to visit uh, laboratories. I, I only knew, knew three laboratories that still do um, real manipulation experience in their studio, in their laboratory. Um, but it's more, yes, to trying to make um, a, relation, a relationship with matter, um, uh, only using forces, time, like heat, um, and this kind of, of, of knowledge. I, I, little knowledge I can build in my, in my studio. Mm -hmm. So may I, have, may I ask one question? Um, so, there was, um, so yeah, it's interesting to see the scale because you're starting from a very small scale. I mean, chemical reaction in a becker and you're projecting it on a very, very large scale because I was wondering when I saw it, uh, um, what kind, is it starting from a very small scale and projected on a, on a big screen? Um, another question is also about the time, uh, the time of the um, of these reaction, chemical reactions, because for uh, uh, an exhibition, for example, for the uh, for, for for this exhibition, Marcel Duchamp Prize, it's a video loop, so that goes. Um, uh, but for others, for example, when it happens in an aquarium. Uh, I suppose, um, I mean, how do you manage, do you control the time of the, rea the chemical reaction or how do you do that? Uh, for the time, it's more um, the, the protocol that I built in, in my studio are um, linked to always to a, a, a kind of amount of time where I want to, to film a video, for example, for like for the Prix Marcel Duchamp or when I do a performance, I want that the everything happened and the landscape appear in something between 10 to 15 minutes. So all the tests I do uh, are mostly for accelerating the reaction I want to use, using heat, using acid, using uh, important concentration of project. But for example, when I, I put an aquarium in an exhibition, I try to, uh, I use a, a, a lot more low concentration I use a lot of um, adjuvant that increase viscosity, so it increases uh, the time of the reaction. And I try to adapt um, the experience I'm working on, on the time of the exhibition or the, 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 the filming moment. Um, and for the size, it's more, um, I, I love a lot a, a laboratory in France that works mainly underwater. And um, for the, they are making uh, experiments, trying to understand the shape of the dunes in the desert uh, of, uh, of different natural formation. And uh, as it is very difficult to work as this scale, uh, they work underwater because water is 800 more dense than air. And so when you make something in a little beaker and you project it, uh, around 800 times bigger, it's, it, you can feel that it's, it would happen at this scale um, in the air, because the air is uh, 800 less dense. So when you have some, some um, iron powder that is coming through the, the aquarium, uh, project in, in a very little scale in water, uh, when you project it so in, in the air of the exhibition, uh, you, 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 have, um, you can have like a sentiment of, um, of truth that uh, if you had some tons of iron powder to throw it in the air, it, it will behave the same way. Um, so yes, this is why I'm also often using um, this kind of, um, of um, change in scale between the, the, the water in which the reaction happens and the air of the exhibition in which the, the video is projected. Um, I have a, a, a question. Um, uh, actually, uh, what you do is, uh, is the way you interfere with time is very impressive because it's as if you would say, look, if, if, um, the human beings wanted to have things evolved in the world 
in such or such way, they could do it actually. So you show you show that what we what we could do, but unfortunately, it doesn't happen like that in reality. And our world is uh, in a bad uh, condition from an ecological point of view, for example. And it's as if you were saying, look, you could change things. Um, is there something like that in your uh, ideas? Completely. I, I think that um, you, you men can have um, an impact on nature and not only by um, building things or moving things or, or almost doing things directly with their hands, but by un understanding um, deeply the process that um, happen in nature, we can completely have an impact on it. But it's more like, um, uh, yes, for me, it's important to understand that are, there, there are uh, uh, thousands and thousands of process that are happening um, uh, around us. And um, I think that the knowledge of, of this, the, the consciousness of all this process, that some are very long, that um, doesn't have, does, we can't see um, uh, with human time scale, uh, but the un understanding of, of this perhaps can make us live better and um, more longer uh, on, on Earth. <laughs> um, just an another quick question. Um, for the Prix Marcel Duchamp, you chose to work in black and white. Uh, and before, sometimes it was very colorful, the composition you realized. Uh, can you say something about this choice? Um, it's really different. I, I, I love to try with, to, to, to work with color, but for me, color is very related to, to painting. Um, but, for, but often in my work, I, I try to, to create some rules and um, for the video uh, of the Prima Solution and some things I'm, I'm working on now, um, uh, the rule for me was to work only with um, the chemical constituent of concrete. So the, the chemical constituent of concrete are white. So the video appear white. But um, if I would if I had chosen to work with uh, something on copper, uh, the color would have been copper-like and. Uh, uh, I like the, the way, the, the, the fact that um, um, in my work, I try to, to, to choose rule and then uh, what um, appear uh, even can surprise me or I can discover it. Uh, the image um, appear, I like to, to, to make protocols or, or systems that make images emerge themselves and they are not really completely choosed by me. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, Isham. And I would like to know, I mean, we are um, uh, coming at the end of this uh, conversation, uh, and unfortunately, but I wanted to know before uh, finishing this talk, um, what are your upcoming uh, projects for uh, next year? Um, mainly I'm working on um, the uh, uh, Biennale in Thailand, the, the second uh, Thailand Biennale that is created by a very good um, Japanese uh, curator. Yeah. Uh, uh, Aseko, uh, Yuko Hasegawa. Yes, exactly. Uh, and uh, I was very happy to, to discuss with them. Th their concepts are very, very interesting. Um, there is also the uh, Guangzhou Biennale, that the MOCO is uh, working on, um, the Museum of Montpellier that uh, has a pavilion there, um, and the Taipei Biennale that will open very, very soon, um, uh, that is created by Martin Guinard and, um, uh, uh, and Bruno Latour. Um, uh, so yes, the main need, it's this, and, and uh, a new project I was with Joao Laia uh, in, in Portugal and in, in Chiasma. Um, uh, that is a young curator that um, I really love um, his way of, of thinking exhibitions. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, these are two biennials that you mentioned, the Guangzhou Biennale and the Taipei Biennale, are two biennials that are um, supported by Institut Français, I mean, for the French artists uh, presented uh, there. So, yeah, thank you so much for this very interesting talks. Uh, thank you to you, Isham. Uh, thank you to you, Alice. Um, uh, 
thank you to you, uh, Sophie, and also to Caroline for the introduction. So, um, yeah, so we are at the end of this talk and uh, we will have another talk today uh, that will be the last one of this uh, talk series that will take place at 2.30 uh, with Eurydice Zaitouna Kala uh, exhibiting at Vasiliev, uh, La Villa Vasiliev from, uh, together with Beton Salon. So, yeah, thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.